Namaste. Just a few days back, the headlines shouted the Kenyan government's inability to pay salaries to its health staff. According to the World Health Organization, the WHO, 55 countries are facing serious health worker shortages as they continue to lose their workers to wealthier nations during the COVID-19 pandemic. African nations are particularly affected, with 37 countries facing shortages that threaten their chances of achieving universal health care by 2030. The WHO has issued an updated health workforce support and safeguards list to highlight nations with low numbers of qualified healthcare staff and emphasizes the need for priority support in health workforce development and health system strengthening. The abysmal assessment on Kenya's governance shows the government's lack of enthusiasm and, and resources to get its act together. Kenya, once the first tourist destination on everybody's bucket list, has now lost its glamour significantly, reducing its income from this source. In Kenya, there is a significant shortage of medical staff across various functions. The country faces a shortage gap of 3,238 medical officers, with the required number being at least 5,317. There is a deficit of 2,313 consultants, and Kenya lacks 1,070 dentists, 4,614 public health officers, an additional 1,020 pharmacists, 4,167 pharma technologists, and specialist clinical officers are short by 3,970 and 9,301 general clinical officers. This scarcity of health professionals poses an enormous challenge to the realization of health rights and the achievement of sustainable development goals in Kenya. Efforts to address this shortage includes training programs, retention policies, and increased production of health workforces. However, with a cash-strapped and ineffective government, one can only see an increase in the despair of the population that now feels the pinch of their decline into obscurity. We have established that across the globe there is a significant shortage of medical staff across various functions, providing the governments the option to offer a combination of healthcare systems for many in the population who are vulnerable to infections and require treatment and aftercare to consider as alternatives to allopathy. Allopathy uses drugs and surgery to treat serious diseases, but it can have side effects and focuses only on the symptoms. Ayurveda, on the other hand, uses natural remedies to promote overall well-being, but it may require long-term treatment and its efficacy varies depending on individual conditions. Finally, homeopathy uses highly diluted substances and is considered safe. It takes into account the whole person, but it is ineffective for serious diseases and lacks strong scientific evidence. In summary, allopathy excels in treating severe conditions, while Ayurvedic and homeopathic approaches are effective for chronic and lifestyle diseases. Kenya, like many countries listed as countries failing to achieve their SDG targets for potable water and sanitation, find themselves in the unenviable position of having limited resources to invest in the health and well-being of their citizens, especially children under 14 years who comprise close to 40% of the population. This condition raises the alarm of the urgency to increase the growth of the economy to enable investments in the country's most critical sectors, which they have so far not been successful at doing. If Kenya, a country with many feasible options, finds itself in such a position, then what of the countries in the rest of the African continent that face a similar challenge even though they may have received technical and financial support from multinational agencies? If writing off the outstanding debt and supporting countries with technical advice, financial support and workable examples of success might be the only answer the global community has left to prevent health services from sliding out of control.